Nights, me, Dobie Gillis, rehearsing with one of the top singing and recording groups in the country. How did it happen? How did modest, unassuming me get started on the trail to showbiz fame and fortune? Well, it started when the Letterman Trio put on a concert at school, and Dad and I went to see it. The auditorium was jammed because that trio's big box office everywhere. Go bum again, go bum again. Yep, those lettermen really sing up a storm. But did you notice that fella in the middle? That's Lou. He had a tendency to be just a tiny bit hammy. Hammy, did I say? Let's face it, he wasn't just hammy, he was going whole hog. <laughs> but get a load of what he does on the next number. Brother, this guy stops at nothing. Look at that jazzy guitar. And look at the other two fellas. Do they like what he's doing? Well, let me put it this way. They're smiling on the outside and cooking up schemes for instant murder on the inside. Summer has come and gone Too late it's much too late. too late, too late, we've lingered here too long, all of the sad young men go. Peter Pryor Junior College. For my next number, I'd like to do a very beautiful song. <laughs> <laughs> Students, I have a wonderful surprise for you. A surprise? What surprise? This. <laughs> this is the saddest day in the history of music. The end of the Letterman. <laughs> If they really want to stay in business, all they got to do is get somebody to take the place of that club. But where are they going to find a fellow who has exactly the right combination of talent and brains and million dollar personality? You rang? <laughs> fit into this picture? Answer. Can this face fit into any picture? <laughs> Let's face it. The odds were a million to one against Maynard becoming a part of the Letterman. And when I explained this, he took it like a real sport. I shall kill myself. Maynard, forget about joining that trio. I'm not going to stand here and let you make a fool of yourself. Well, where are you going to stand while I make a fool of myself? Maynard, get that crazy notion out of your head. Why couldn't I join up? Like, why? All I thought I have to have is good looks, charm, and a million-dollar personality, and I just answered my own question. Where do I go to join the Foreign Legion? <laughs> Boy Scouts? Cub Scouts? Campfire Girls? Maynard. Singing with the Letterman means a lot to you, doesn't it? Oh, good buddy, it's a matter of life or death, maybe all three. Then I'm gonna help you. Oh, for joy, for joy. I'll act as your agent and get you the job. Attaboy, Dope. I'll tell him how great you are. Attaboy, Dope. I'll turn on my charm and personality. We're in big trouble, Dope. <laughs> Never mind. Besides, I'll have to take you. We've got him over a barrel. Over a barrel? Man, it must be awful hard to sing all squinched up over a barrel. Oh, <laughs> mammy, little baby. Oh, baby. Yeah, man, get back. <laughs> Look. The Letterman signed a contract to sing in the school auditorium Saturday night. But if they don't have three singers, they're not a trio and they don't get paid. If they're not a trio, what are they? What they are is in big trouble. Real big trouble on account of we'd be breaking a contract and the school could sue us for a cotton-picking fortune. Then we've got to get somebody quick. True. All we need is a college boy. True. Who can fit the sweater. True. And can take orders. True. And has a great personality. False. Huh? Wrong. A personality boy is all wrong. Look at the headaches we just went through with the last one. True. What we need is a nothing. A genuine certified nobody. 
Somebody we can replace like a tin can on a shelf and nobody knows the difference. With a face and a personality like a play of warmed over yogurt. Hello. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Doby Gillis. The answer to a shorthanded trio's dream. Amen. Gentlemen, let us not dilly-dally. I'm the sole and exclusive representative of my client, Maynard G. Krabs, known in musical circles as a songbird of S. Peter Pryor College. A face like warmed over yogurt with a personality to match. We could be placing like a can of sardines on a shelf. Please to meet you. What's up to your trio ship? Uh, you want to meet me on a Peggio or two? Bye bye. No, no, no. No free samples. Friends, I'm a hard headed businessman and I pull no punches. You need a new man for your group, and by an astounding coincidence, my client is temporarily at liberty. Boys, I like the cut of your jib, and I'm going to make you a sensational offer. It's a deal. Now, I know you're not the slightest bit. <laughs> no kidding. Let's shake on it. Oh, for joy, for joy. Oh, this is wonderful. My client can sign the contracts immediately. Client? What client? We're hiring you. Me? You. Him. Him. But I can't sing. Great. I'm tone deaf. Perfect. I'm a miserable musician. Atta boy. <laughs> Maynard, I hit you low down rat. <laughs> There's a nice yogurt. I went to get Maynard a job and they hired me. I can't say that I blame them, but it didn't make for kind of an ethical problem. I mean, I'm all for bouncing up there to the top, but is it fair to use your best friend's heart for a pogo stick? I don't know where you go when you have a serious problem like this, but I go to a man who's famous for his warm heart and unselfish viewpoint. Grab the loot. But how about poor Maynard? Yeah, how about poor Maynard? Dad, huh? what about the ethics? Oh, nice little car. I used to drive one myself. <laughs> <laughs> what we are talking about right now, boy, is all them wealthy singers. Why, those kids got so much loot, they're the only college boys in the world putting their fathers through business. Dad. <laughs> yes, my son. My loving, grateful, <laughs> obligated son. Hey, Dad, listen. Uh, remember how I used to walk the floor with you and burp you when you were a baby? Remember how I spent all that money getting braces put on your teeth? No, Dad, remember I'm not I... getting through to you. What's bugging me is Maynard. He's my friend. Oh, you're all hard, boy, but one has to look out for number one. Stealing this job away from him and be like kicking him in the teeth. Mm, well, let's face facts. This is a dog-eat-dog -dog world. True. Thanks for pointing it out. Oh, me. my pleasure. And thanks for showing me what I have to do. Mm -hmm. You have to kick him in the teeth, huh? No, I'm going to quit the job and let Maynard have it. That's what I have been telling you for years, boy. Let Maynard have it. Dad, I know how you feel. You're proud of me, and you think I'm a fine, honorable boy. No, not exactly. Oh? I think you are a fine, honorable nut. Dad, you don't mean that. You want to bet? Look, I know it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world, but we're not schnauzers or poodles or cocker spaniels. We're human beings. Mm, we are, but I ain't so sure about Maynard. Maynard's a human being, too. I think. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm going to help him get that job. Mm, I'm thinking. Ha-ha, you're thinking that now you're proud of me, huh, Dad? Ha-ha, uh -huh, I'm thinking that now is a rotten time for you to start acting like your mother's side of the family. Dad, please. Look, if you want to kick away all this loot, boy, I ain't going to fight you. In fact, I'm going to help you. Oh, good, Dad, but getting him to hire Maynard won't be easy. No, we got to think of something tricky and underhanded. Oh, no, I won't go for that sort of thing. It has got to be low and sneaky or it ain't going to work. Absolutely Otherwise, not. Maynard's going to be moaning and groaning and hanging around your neck for the rest of his life. When do we start being low and sneaky? Low and sneaky? Me? Unlow and sneaky? Me? Right, Maynard, it's the only way. Just make sure you remember the plan. You bet I remember. What plan? You're going out there and tell those fellas in the trio that I suddenly lost my voice and you take over. Oh, man, you lost your voice. What you'll do is take some hot, scaly, salty water and giggle. Maynard, that's gargle and pay attention. I didn't really lose my voice. Oh, for joy, for joy, a miracle recovery. I got this note that explains everything. Just give it to those fellas out there and say I lost my voice. Got it? Got it. I give it to them and say I lost my voice, right? Wrong. <laughs> Maynard, you didn't lose your voice. You point to me and you say, Mr. Gillis lost his voice. Got it? Got it. I point to you and say your father lost his voice, right? <laughs> yeah, let's try once more. I give them the note, point to me, and say nothing. Got it? Got it. And there's nothing I say, should I say it fast or slow? 